and welcome back. We are going to finally get some garden cleanup done. It's a sunny day, but it's a little chilly out here, but perfect for cleaning up the garden. So that's what we're going to go do today. Come with me and let's get started. We're finally going to start cleaning up the garden. It's the end of March. I typically have all of my beds prepped and ready to go. So I am a little bit behind schedule, but it's really too cold to do too much of anything out here. So no harm, no foul. So let me turn you around and show you what the plan is for the day. This is the main garden area. And what we're going to focus on is getting the weeds out of all of these beds. We're going to add a little compost, a little worm casting, a little fertilizer. So they are prepped and ready to go. So that is the plan for the day. And I'm going to bring you along with me. The only tools that I'm going to need today pretty much is a spade and a hoe. As we work on getting all of these weeds out of the garden beds, I may pull a few of the weeds up in between the beds, but that's not going to be my main focus for today. We are going to focus on all of the garden beds. So I am going to just start right here. And let me grab my wheelbarrow. I've decided against the wheelbarrow. Instead, I'm going to start by putting these weeds in a trash bag and then i'll take the trash bag to dump the weeds into my neighbor's composting bin so we share that area he lets me put all of my yard waste over there so we can enjoy the compost so we will use the bag for that i really don't like to stoop um i have a bad back so i use this little step stool as my little chair I've actually have a garden chair that I could use, but I tell you, I really like the way the step stool works. Even though this isn't the main focus, it's looking at me. So I want to try to get this up right here. The ground again is super, super wet. And so with the ground being super wet, it's going to make pulling these weeds up should be anyway, a lot easier than if the ground was so dry and compacted. I work really hard to try to pull the weeds up by the roots so that they don't come back so fast. Um, these beds have been in place here for probably more than 10 years now. And, um, you know, I've changed the frame over the years, but the bed itself has been around a long time. And so it, it has some weeds in it. Now, if I had covered this bed with leaf mulch like I've done in the past, there wouldn't be as many weeds out here, but unfortunately life got in the way and that just didn't happen. This could be a lot worse, I guess is how I should think about it. And I should be glad that it's not as bad as it could be. So last year I put drip irrigation throughout this whole garden space. And honestly, it did pretty good. But the size drip irrigation that I'm using wouldn't give me a deep watering the way I liked. So once a week I would still hand water deeply. And then during the week I would turn the drip irrigation on for about 30 minutes a day at most, depending on if it rains or not. And it really worked because I was able to get water just to the plants versus watering a whole bed. So I liked it pretty good. Um, I'm always afraid that I'm going to forget and leave it on. So I'm still a little shy with the drip irrigation. Last year was the first year and I loved it so much that I installed it at my neighbor's um, as well. As well as one of my co-workers, I went over to their house and installed drip ir irrigation for them. I like it much better than a soaker hose. I started with the soaker hose last year and honestly it did horrible. It leaked all over the place. It was dripping in places I didn't want it to drip and then had nothing coming out in other spaces. So the drip irrigation and the way the conductors work and everything about it is just a much better setup for me. In these beds here along my garage, 
in the past years, I've always grown tomatoes along the back here. And they've always done really, really well. And I believe it's because of the warmth coming off of the garage. I've had tomato plants taller than the garage here where I had to get on a step ladder to get tomatoes off of the top. And the plants were over on the roof of the garage. So I will continue to put tomatoes back here. But I use a different type of staking method for them, which you'll get to see this year. That's different from cattle panels. I am going to go ahead and pull up this drip irrigation. Depending on what I put in this bed, I may lay it out slightly different, but at least we know it's there and ready to be pulled in. All of this wire is what I used last year in place of cattle panel, and um, it did okay, not as well as cattle panel, so that's why I'm doing cattle panel this year, but it's good wire, so. I'm sure I can repurpose it for something else. So just trying to get it picked up and out the way. So we will just keep continuing to move down, picking up the water lines, pushing them back, and looking for any type of weeds that are trying to come in and take over. Peanuts. Peanuts, peanuts, peanuts. I believe the battle with the squirrels has already begun and I'm just not aware of it. My neighbors think squirrels are these furry little great things and they're great until it's garden season. So when I plant in my garden, there's one for me, two for the squirrels and one for the deer. That's pretty much how it's been going over the past few years. Um, now, I put traps out for the squirrels and we take them off to uh, a park that's not too far away. Um, but within a couple of weeks, a new set of squirrels come into the into the neighborhood. So we'll just keep trapping and and taking them out to the to a park that's not far away. Um, but I have to limit the number of squirrels in here because I want my food. But they always seem to get the first tomatoes um, and they like to leave me nuts and peanuts behind. So we will start our battle here shortly. We're probably a month away from the battle. Now I'm talking about the squirrels, but I have squirrels and chipmunks and deer. Um, I usually, for the deer lately, um, it hasn't been too bad for deer as far as, you know, animals getting into the garden, messing with the food. Um, the deer typically stays on the outskirts of my garden and it visits every garden in the neighborhood. So typically by the time they get to me, they really don't want too much out of my garden. I move my brassicas in farther into the garden and the deer usually don't come into the garden. They usually stay on the outskirts. So uh, brassicas seem to be what they liked most. Last year, they got very few of my brassicas, but the squirrels and the chipmunks. That's a whole nother story. You'll get to come along this year with me as we start trapping and see who's going to win the battle this year. In this bed here, we'll have tomatoes on the back side of this space here. I'll probably interplant onion and on the front here will probably be onion as well or basil or anything else I can put into this space. I start piling it all in. For the most part, I use the square foot garden method, um, which basically you plant in a grid versus the traditional long rows of planting. So you'll get to see some of that this year. Uh, sometimes I just get lazy and I just put it in a row and call it a day. But it's a combination of square foot gardening and whatever space I got, make sure that there's something in that space. So you're going to see some pretty close spacing of some of my vegetables, and that's going to be intentional. Uh, you want to make sure there's still enough room for airflow, but you don't want enough room for weeds to grow. And so I can harvest a space and, and replant that space. So it's not going to be harvesting everything at one time and then I have this open area. So you'll get to see that this year. It's good. It's not that bad.
I missed that taproot again. Tell you, these onion right here, I am never going to get all the way down to get these roots out. So they're going to continue to come back every year. But I'm going to keep trying. I don't give up. I'm going to keep going for those roots. And when I get those roots, I get them all. And then that weed will never come back again. But another one will take its place. Stuff growing on top because this fell. See? So now dirt's on top. So, of course, it wants to grow in the dirt. All right. This is the big mess back here. This is bad. But I don't think it's as bad as it appears to be. But we're going to start working on it right now. But we're going to come at it from this end. I don't know what kind of weed this is. But it spreads so fast in my garden that I have the hardest time keeping it out the garden. If somebody knows what this is and how I can get rid of it, please, please, please put something in the comments because I need this to go away. It chokes out this bed almost every year. This is the one bed I have to constantly weed all season long to try to stay in front of whatever that vine is. It's like a layer of carpet. A lot of people believe you should get the rototiller and till it up or you get a hole and just chop this up, but you're still not getting to the root. And as long as you don't get to the root, it's coming back. So I will all of these beds, top dress all of them and disturb probably the top four or five inches. But after that, I don't, I don't till it anymore. Years ago, I used to till it, but I don't till my beds anymore. And I've been getting better production since I stopped doing that. But this, tell you, I'm tired of this bed. I may next year take it completely out and start fresh. Put new, um, uh, smother all the weeds out and start this bed over because I, I, I get tired of cleaning this bed up. And last year wasn't so bad, but I put my leaf mulch on at the end of the season and it kept these weeds from spreading. But again, life got in the way and that didn't happen for this bed last year. And now I'm paying the price. As you can see, I'm having some pretty major issues with this bed here. So I may have to do this bed at another time. I'm going to have to spend a lot of time over here trying to get probably the top four inches of this bed out. Um, because it's just like a solid mat of weeds. So I'm going to just try to finish up right here real quick. And then we will start amending the other beds. Going to get these few weeds right here. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. I think we about got it. Again, not perfection. But better than it was. With the exception of one bed. And that one bed is going to be a project all to itself. I'm going to see if these onion right here will overwinter. Um, they've been there since last year. We'll see what happens with them this year. So I'm just going to leave them everywhere else. All of the beds are mostly weeded all the way over into this space here. I didn't touch these back two beds here, here, or here. Um, I have my garlic in those beds. I will need to weed them eventually, but just not today. Then this bed here is in better shape. And then we have this mess here that I'm going to have to remove the top few layers of this soil to get rid of these weeds. So I think that's a good start of cleaning up this garden space. Now I'm going to work on amending the beds. The soil in these beds is already extremely awesome soil. I have my BX Pro Mix soil in these beds. It has a mycorrhizal in it as well. So it has um, a great growth medium. It was used last year and I have it in most of my beds. I topped all of my beds off last year with all of the container potting mix that I had with the exception of the handful that are behind me here in this pile. All the rest of them got topped off with excellent potting soil as well. 
So I am going to add just a few worm castings to each of these beds, as well as um, a little bit of this mushroom compost that I have. I'm gonna add some fertilizer, go and mix it up, and these beds will be good to go for this, for this year. I don't have much of this mushroom compost left, so I'm going very light on that, but I have plenty of the worm castings. As I think about what I'm putting in each of the beds as well, I'm adding this mushroom compost to the beds that will have tomatoes in them for sure. The worm castings is what I call black gold. Now I will give all of my beds the final like good mix and stir when I'm ready to plant something into them. I'm just trying to get them set up ready to go. As I mentioned earlier, I am not going to till my beds. I am only going to disrupt the top, you know, four inches or so of the soil. So I can mix in this compost and the worm castings. The soil is already very, very loose in this bed. This is definitely a bed of pro mix. Now this bed is happy. Let's go make another bed happy. Another happy bed. Another happy bed. Another bed ready. There are quite a few leaves and peanuts in this bed. Yes, peanuts are in all the beds. When I say peanuts, I mean the shell of the peanut, not the nut itself. So it's not like they're even leaving me anything that I can grow in the garden. I tell you what, you're going to hear me complain about those squirrels a lot this year. It normally takes me several weekends to do this task that I'm doing right now to be able to manage this many beds in one day is actually doing pretty good for me. It's not something I'm used to being able to do. This will be the first year that I'm planting tomatoes all the way down in this bed. I've usually only used the first few, in, the first few feet into this bed for tomatoes, but I have over a hundred tomato plants this year and I need as many places as possible to put those tomato plants. So we are extending the tomato bed here. Most of my beds are two feet wide. If you think about the square foot gardening method, typically you have a four by four bed, which means that you can reach the bed from all sides. I'm short and I found it very difficult to reach all the way across into a four foot bed. So I changed my beds and made them eight feet long and only two feet wide, which means I will have, if you think about each foot being one spot, I will have uh, uh, two different rows of vegetables growing and I can reach those vegetables from either side. With them only being two feet wide, some vegetables take up just a little more space than that. And I was finding that vegetables were into my walkways. So when I rebuilt this bed here, I made it three feet wide. So I can have three uh, different spots going across and it is now 10 feet long. So I'm getting away just a little bit from the square foot garden method, but it's the same ideal though. Y'all know I'm talking to you because I was resting. That was, that's how I took a rest break from this work here. Talk to you about something else that I wanted to make sure I shared with you. Tell you what, the soil in all of these beds looks so good, with the exception of that one. I mean, it's fluffy, it's light. Uh, my native soil it has, is heavy clay, which makes it very difficult to grow vegetables in. It's hard for the roots to get around in heavy clay soil. I have brought in all the soil for all of my beds, so none of this is clay. If you go down a good foot or more, there's some clay soil down there, but there's no clay soil in any of my beds. I've been amending these beds now for more than 10 years for some of them. And for others, 
as I've been adding the beds, for example, last year was the first year for one of these beds. This bed's always been here now, probably for a good six years or more. Um, all I did was improve the uh, box that it's in, but the soil has been here. And every year at the end of the season, I take all of the soil from my pots. So whether they were potatoes in the pots or squash or whatever was in the pot becomes the soil for my bed the next year. And it has continued to improve all of the beds in my garden. I think this is a good stopping point. You get the idea of what I'm doing here. I was able to come in and weed most of these spaces. I went ahead and amended the soil and I don't know, what is this? A little more than half of the beds. I still have a couple of beds I need to clean up um, back over in this space here. And then I still have this hot mess of a bed back here. But other than that, we're mostly clean. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'm going to keep this outdoor garden content coming. Thank you. Please subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful blessed day. Bye-bye.